In this video, I'll show you how to install a Dash gauge pod with gauges on your Mazda X8. First off, if you're new here and like to watch RX8 videos, then consider subscribing. Water temperature, oil temperature, and oil pressure gauges are a very important addition to your RX8 performance and health. As the stock oil pressure gauge is not connected to anything and the water temperature gauge is not the most reliable one. So if you plan on hitting the track with your RX8, these three gauges are a must have and here's how to install them. On a side note, more detailed info will be displayed on my forum under gauge install along with after install notes, so make sure you check that out. In this kit, I have the water temperature gauge, oil temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge, the low-tech dash gauge pod, the Mishimoto coolant adapter and the Mishimoto oil sandwich adapter. All of the items and tools I'll be using will be linked in the description, so make sure you check them out. First off, jack up the front of your car and put it on jack stands. Next, grab a pan and slide it under the car right below the radiator drain plug. Now slowly unscrew the bolt with a screwdriver and then remove it with your hand. Release the cap on the coolant reservoir to increase the flow of coolant. When there is no more coolant dripping out, put back the bolt and tighten it. But don't exaggerate cause you can break it. Take out the pan and pour the coolant in a 5 liter plastic bottle so that you can either reuse it if you recently replace it or use it as a measurement for new coolant. Next, put the cap back on the reservoir. Slide the pan under the oil filter and then unscrew the oil filter and take it out. Next, disconnect your battery and take it out. Now push the bottom part of the battery case and pull the upper part to get it loose. Do this all around. When done, take it out. Next up, we have to remove the three bolts holding down the bottom piece. Loosen the central bolt with a 10mm socket and extension on your ratchet. When done, take it out. Remove the two remaining bolts with a 10mm wrench. When done, take out the bracket. Next up, unscrew the shift knob and take it out. Slide back your armrest and unclip the panel around the shifter by simply pulling it upwards on the corners. Once it's loose, take it out and put it on the side. There's no need to disconnect the seat heating connectors. Now unscrew the two screws holding down the ashtray and take them out. Using both hands, pull out the ashtray and put it on the side. Now go under your stereo and locate the two center screws. Take your crosshead screwdriver, unscrew them and take them out. Next up, take out the plastic cover under the steering wheel by simply pulling it out on the side. If after you take the cover off you see a metal panel underneath it, remove the four screws that are holding it and you should be good. Now locate the bolt that is holding down your radio on the side and use your extension to release it. When it's loose, unscrew it with your hand and carefully take it out. Next up, grab your unit from the bottom by sliding your fingers in behind the two temperature buttons. Start pulling it out slowly until it gets a bit loose on the sides. When it does, grab the top right part with your hand and pull it to release it. When done, take the whole unit out. With that done, unscrew the two screws holding down the vents and take them out. Now carefully pull out the vents from the bottom corners and take them out. Unscrew the two screws holding down the top dash and then take them out. Next, start lifting the dash from the front and then simply unclip it from the pins and take it out. Get the cutting guide sheet that came with the gauge pot and cut out the middle part and the bottom line so that it looks like this. Now measure the center of the front of your dash and mark it with a pencil. Next, position your guide sheet so that the bottom line is on the line you marked with your pencil and then use your pencil to mark the edges of the sheet. When done, it should look like this. Next, use a mini drill to cut out the marked line. When done, take out the middle part and it should look like this. Position your gauge pod and see if it sits flush. If it doesn't, like in my case, grind the internal edges a bit more. Next, position it again and see if the edges and front part sit flush. If not, grind again. But if they do, take a utility knife and clean all the excess plastic of the internal edge. And this is how the final product looks like. Next, mark the top line of the gauge pod so you'll know up to where to put the silicone glue. Now clean the internal area to get off all the grease and debris. Next, apply a black silicone glue and be careful not to go too close to the edges, otherwise it will pour out when you attach it to the top part. With that done, clean the under part of the gauge pod and attach it to the dash. 
Make sure that the front and sides are perfectly aligned. Then put some paper under the top part of the G-clamp and tighten it so that it holds the two plastics in place. But don't over tighten it cause you can crack it. With all four clamps holding down the pots to the dash on all four corners, flip it and apply the silicone all around the space where the pot and dash meet. When done, leave it to dry for 24 hours. Next up, take your oil filter and two adapter bolts. Screw one of the bolts in the filter. If it feels wobbly, then it's not the correct size. Screw in the next one and it should feel nice and firm. Next, take out the side bolt from the adapter and make sure it has Teflon tape on the thread. If not, apply it, then screw it back in and tighten it with your ratchet. Next, take the Allen key that came with the kit and unscrew the two dummy bolts. Now take your oil pressure sensor, wrap some Teflon tape on the thread, work it in with your hands, but don't cover the front sensor. And then screw it in one of the two holes of the adapter. It doesn't matter which one. When done, tighten it with your wrench until it's nice and snug. Repeat the same process for the oil temperature sensor, then screw it in the adapter and tighten it with your wrench until it's nice and snug. And the oil adapter is done. Now take the long wires that connect to the oil temperature sensor and oil pressure sensor. Fit the wires inside a protective tubing so they don't get damaged. Just like that. Next, connect the white temperature wire connector to the white one on the adapter. And do the same for the black one. Make sure you press them together all the way so they can't get loose. Just like this. Now slide the tube over the connections and up to the sensor. Next, clip in the oil pressure connector into the connector of the sensor. Slide the protective tube up to the connector and you can tape it with some insulation tape to make it waterproof. And our sandwich adapter is ready to be installed. Next up, put some Teflon tape on the water sensor, work it in the threads, screw it in the adapter and then tighten it with a wrench until it's nice and snug. Put the long connecting wire into a protective tubing and connect the two white and black connectors. White goes with white and black goes with black. And then slide the protective tube up to the sensor. And voila, our coolant adapter is ready. Put some oil in a cap and oil up the bottom rubber seal of the oil adapter. Next, position the adapter so that the rubber seal is on the bottom of the adapter. And then place it where the oil filter used to be. When done, take the adapter bolt and screw it in the middle of the oil adapter. Next, take a 26 mm socket, put it on a long extension with flexible head and tighten the nut with your ratchet until it's nice and snug. Now put some oil on your oil filter's rubber gasket and then screw it on the oil sandwich plate and you can tighten it by hand as far as it goes. Next, put the two long wires on the right side corner of the engine bay. Along the path, secure them with zip ties. Next, take your bent nose pliers and squeeze the plastic clip on this metal plate and then push it in so it releases the plate. Next, slide the two clamps of the big rubber hose using your bent nose pliers. Take your hose pick and work it all around the internal part of the hose to get it nice and loose. With your glove on, use one hand to hold the metal bracket and with the other, pull and twist the rubber hose until you get it out. Some coolant will fall out, but don't worry about it. Repeat the same process with the hose on the other side until you remove the metal tube bracket. Now wash the spilled coolant away with some water and then dry it with a rug or paper towels. Use your pliers to remove the two clamps on the hoses. Put the new hose clamp on the lower hose and slide in one side of the adapter. Repeat the same process and slide in the other part of the adapter in the upper hose. With the hoses snugly attached to the adapter, use your screwdriver and tighten the clamps so that they are as snug as they can get. When done, make sure you zip tie the adapter to the ECU bracket so that it doesn't rub on the metal bar underneath it. And there we go! The optimal way to run the wires will be all the way in the front and on the side, but mine was very short and I had to run it in the middle and then on the side. Make sure that you zip tie the tubing containing the wires every 10 to 20 centimeters so that it's not loose in the engine bay. Next up, look up to the right corner of your engine bay and you should see this hole. If we take a look at it from the inside, we should be able to move it and see daylight. 
run all three wires through it and get them inside the cabin. When done, remember to seal the hole on both sides with some transparent silicon to prevent water from entering the cabin. Zip tie the wires together every 10 centimeters and run them upwards to this metal bracket. Here you will zip tie them to it. Next, run them behind the steering shaft, pull them up behind the metal bracket up to this big black group of wires. When there, zip tie the three wires to that big one. This way, the wires will be out of the way of the steering rack when it's turning. Now you're gonna run the wires where this white guide wire is. So let's follow it up until we see light. And if we look at it from the top, this is where you want them to come out. So run the three wires up until you get them on your dash. Now if you look behind the radio, you should see a large white connector with a lot of wires. Find the blue one with a red stripe on it. Use your pliers and cut it in half. Use your wire stripper to strip the two ends of the wires and then twist them so they are not loose. Next, locate a yellow wire behind your cigarette lighter. Slide back the wire insulation to make the yellow wire longer and then cut it in the middle. Now strip both ends and twist them. Next, put a 20 cm long black wire inside a terminal and then crimp it in place so that it's nice and secure. Now locate this bolt on the dash and position the terminal on it. Put on a washer and screw on a nut. Next, tighten the whole thing with your ratchet. Take a 50 cm long red wire and run it from the left side of the upper dash down to the radio. From there, run it behind the radio panel until you get it down to the ashtray. The best way to connect these three wires is by soldering them and using shrink wire to protect them. But if you're not good at soldering or do not know how to do it, you can use this three-way clip-on connector. Simply slide in the stripped and twist wire and then close the clip to secure it in place. Simple as that. Do the same for the two remaining yellow wires. Now take the top part of the long red wire and insert it in a 4 or 5 point connector. When done, close the clip to secure it in place. Next up, take another 50 cm long red wire and fit it down the left side so that it comes out where the radio is. Now strip and twist both ends of it. Insert it in a 3 point connector and secure it in place. One of the two blue and red wires is too short to reach the connector, so we're gonna extend it by attaching a 10 cm long red wire to it. So cross and twist the two ends of the blue and red and red wire together and either use some shrinking tape or wrap some insulation tape around the connection to protect it. Now we can slide the red extended wire that extends the blue and red one and the remaining blue and red one into the connector and clip them in place. Take the top part of the long red wire, insert it into a 5 point connector and secure it in place. Next, insert the black wire that we installed earlier in a 5 point connector and then close the clip to secure it in place. Put some insulation tape on one of the two long red wires so you'll know which one is attached to the radio or lighter. In the box I got three power connectors that have red, orange, black and white wires on them. The red one goes to the connector with the red wire connected to the radio. The orange one goes into the connector with the red wire connected to the cigarette lighter. The black wire goes in the connector with the black wire grounded with a yellow terminal. The white wire can also be used instead of the orange one if you want a different color of your gauge. But if not, tape it on the side and don't connect it anywhere. You can check the manual for various color combinations. And there we go, our three point wires are all set up. Now it's time to see if the gauges fit inside a pod. If not, use your mini drill to grind and enlarge the holes until the gauges fit in snugly. With all three gauges now installed, we can finally mount it. The connections are pretty easy. So the power wire goes in one of the two upper pinholes and the sensor connector is on the lower right pinhole. This connection is the same for all three gauges. With that done, you can put back your battery, turn your key so that the lights illuminate, but don't turn on the car, and see if the gauges work. And they do! It's normal that the oil pressure one is flashing. Now check your oil level and add some more to compensate for the spilled one from the oil filter. When done, take a small funnel, put it in your coolant reservoir, and pour in the coolant you took out before. 
If it was old, then measure the quantity you took out and pour in some new one. When it won't suck any more coolant, start your car and blast your heat at full power. After that, the reservoir will empty a bit so you can pour in the rest of your coolant and maybe add a little bit more. When there are no air bubbles coming out, we can put the cap on and leave the car to work for 20 minutes. Or you can just take it for a short ride. In the meanwhile, check that there are no leaks under the car and the temperature gauge doesn't spike up. With all of that done, it's time to turn on your car. The water temperature gauge is working, the oil temperature too, and the oil pressure also. You want to compare the water temperature on the gauge with the one on your OBD2 scanner to see how close they match. To find out what temperatures you must not exceed along with other possible issues and features, you can visit the install page on my forum. The link will be in the description. So that is how you install gauges on a Mazda X8. And as always, all the things that I've used in this video will be linked in the description. And if you found this video useful, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and feel free to check out more RX8 videos on my channel.